Okay. Okay. So look into my eyes and describe what you see. <laughs> I mean, I see almost 20 years of friendship, of growing, of so many pivotal life experiences with you. That you're a pretty young woman <laughs> and not the kid that I was used to seeing. And I'm really proud of you. I mean, things you already know when I look into your eyes is how um, they slope downward. <laughs> and it's kind of just like a sad puppy. <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. <laughs> Great smile. And I love the little bang action you have going on. <laughs> I see someone who's genuine and warm and so incredibly charismatic that it makes me jealous sometimes. Um, <laughs> like in a very real sense, I'm like, oh, that's my brother. He's cut his hair in the past five years and that's really disconcerting in many ways. And he still does the same smile that he's always done, although it looks a little bit more natural now than it used to because it's like creeping its way from his mouth into his eyes, whereas before it was just the mouth. Recently, when have you been the most worried for me and why? Worried. Right now. You're, you're, you're a six foot six black man. I mean, I'm a six foot one black woman. We're, we're large people um, and we're black. And it's not so much that I'm worried for you, but I know that things can happen. Things have happened to people that look like us. I think we were going for our anniversary to Hibachi. Remember when we were in the Uber and the Uber driver got pulled over and we were just sitting there. Like, it's not our car, it's an Uber. We should be able to just like, you know, get out and walk away. But can we get out? Can we walk away? You know, like what, is, what would happen if like you and I stepped out of the passenger seats yeah. of that car? Yeah, I, I never told you, but man, I've never been so scared in my life. My heart was literally beating out of my chest because you know what? We were black and we were in the back of that car. And even though nothing that we did warranted why we got pulled over, I knew just the same thoughts you were thinking, like, can we get out the car? You know, can we, can we explain our situation that, Hey, we're just passengers in the Uber. And the one thing that I kept on thinking to myself, I said, okay, you know what? Keep calm, keep calm. Cause you have to be strong for your girlfriend. You know, you have to be strong for her. And also to have, not just one cop, but several cop cars, which was very peculiar to me because it was just a stop sign. And I'm thinking to myself, why are there four or five cops right here? You know, what's going on? Like, is this guy, you know, involved in something else? Or maybe, you know, they think we're a part of something bigger than what's going on at the time. But yeah, you're right. And I, I've, I thank God every day that, hey, you know, we got out of that situation unscathed and we were able to go to dinner. But man, was that one of the scariest times in my life. Yeah. Like, I, th I, I think you and I got in that car and got out of the car as different people. I, this is the, almost like the first time I feel hopeful that things can change. So we need more people of, um, more Caucasians, more non-Blacks standing up with us and demanding equality, justice, all of that. Things that we should, we shouldn't have to ask for. Yeah. But yeah, so this, to see, to see everyone unifying is, has been a beautiful thing. Yeah, I agree. And beautiful. Like I said, ask away. I don't mind educating. If I don't know any something, I'll say, well, look it up, Jason, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, but I love that difficult conversations are happening. More conversations need to be happening. It's 
know. It's, just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it really says something about you that you are describing what is happening right now as something that is giving you hope. Right. Um, because it's so easy to get mired down in all of the horrible stuff that's happening mm -hmm. and feel exactly the opposite of that. Right. Which is, you know, sort of where my head has been. I get it. Is in a very chaotic place, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but to hear that you're seeing hope yeah is um that's really nice you know there there are ways to help and there are ways to talk to people and like kind of create small change like i've been talking to my dad and been trying to you know because for him it was like asian americans work so hard this is why we are successful and i'm like no there's more factors to like that also allow for our success right because i'm sh like he's bought into the model minority yeah. yeah, it's she's bought into the model minority, which is unhealthy, and also like it also implies that other minorities are lazy, which is also not great. And I, I'm still working on it. I don't think he's completely. Um, yeah. 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 It takes a lot of self consciousness to like actively confront something that you disagree with. Yeah. What is the pain in me you wish you could heal? Ooh, son of a bitch. Um. The essay from Stockholm, mm -hmm. that one really freaked me out. And that's not to be like, how dare you make me read something that really freaks me out because mm -hmm. you were opening up and sharing. And I don't want you to be worried about telling me those things. And it was really actually quite, it, I was touched that you felt comfortable sharing it with me. But I would take that away from you. And I don't, like, that's the thing when we were talking about mental health, that like, you'll like every once in a while have like a grumble moment or like a, like a small existential moment. And then you'll smack me in the face with like, full-scale terrifying stuff and and so I don't know how far you've gotten from that which is why I'll never know how much like mental health care you need because all I have to go on is brief snippets of conversation and a single essay that scared the balls out of me and so like I don't know if you've gone past that but even if it was even if it is no longer how you feel and even if it has shaped who you are you know you know our past makes us who we are blah 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 blah, blah. I it physically pains me to think that you ever had to feel like that yeah like I think as I get older and like coming to terms with like my queer identity and um, just learning about the history and like the weight, I guess, of yeah, this community and this history. It's just very, it, it makes me so sad, so sad. And I think especially now, um, sometimes is very scary, very uncertain. But I think that like, even just the last conversation we had two days ago, just yeah, your willingness to like ask questions and like always just coming so open and in a place where like, you're never trying to like speak for other people, which is like so important, you know, like as an ally, right? Um, but yeah, just like caring and learning and even like sharing about own experiences and own thoughts. Um, like to me, that's as supportive as you can be, I think in all this. So I think even just from that conversation we had that really just like quelled a lot of any just fear or like any negative emotions I had. Oh man, <laughs> if this were to be our last conversation, what is something you never want me to forget? That I love you and that I'm really sorry for treating you bad when we were kids. 
that's one thing that I will always regret. I mean, like always. So yeah, that I love you, I miss you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Like, I think that you're just, like, I'm just really sad that we were had to be separated. I think it's really yeah. unfair. Um, I wouldn't have chosen to go here. Um, I wish we, like, grew up together. Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't have the relationship that we have now. We we'll never know. Jaden here from The Skin Deep. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to have more meaningful conversations, please make sure to check out the end relationship card game. You can find it at theskindeep.com slash shop. Thank you.